Our next presenter, well, I really do not have to present before because everything, everybody here in, in the room will know him, Frieda Nake. Maybe you can already uh, come here. Everybody knows him. He was educated as a mathematician who got into programming in 1963 when computer science did not yet exist at universities. And he got into computer art in 1965 when this either did not exist. So he's one of the three humans worldwide ever who made a breakthrough from the analog world into the digital world. Frieda, my dear friend, would you please come on stage? Um, where are you? Here. Okay. Thank you, dear. Ich freue mich, dass du da bist. She makes me nervous. Ah, he is a special case, you know. He tends to talk longer than, no, than no, expected. No, no. I, I'll so I will, I have to. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> the analog computer has built into it curves. Curves are the output, continuous curves, and the curve always is continuous, the analog computer has built into it as its output method, continuous curves of the continuous, the analog. Digital computers have built into them the discrete principle, the principle of something or nothing, of zero or one, or even of one, two, three, four, ten. This is the principal difference between the two computers, and therefore it is amazing when digital computers were used, digital computers, to produce images. Um, thank you for, yeah. Think the image, don't make it. Uh, thinking the image was not necessary with analog computers. It is absolutely necessary with digital computers. We don't make images anymore, therefore we cannot be artists. We have the machine to do that for us. I show you here a little publication, it's really slim, that invented, the publication didn't invent it, the author, that invented the term generative in our context. Um, Max Benze, his name has been mentioned, has a little three-page essay in there, Projects of Generative Aesthetics. That's the first appearance, as far as I know, uh, of this principle that will most likely govern uh, these two days of a conference. So there you see Max Benze in a typical, uh, in a very untypical uh, poster. He's lecturing, you see a blackboard behind. When he was lecturing, it was going like this. Um, and he was talking all the time, standing here the window, looking out, walking again, and occasionally looking at us. Um, thinking as you are moving. And thinking is a way of moving, yeah, of very generally speaking, of moving something in the brain. Benze could not stand and talk uh, if he rested for a moment, he was sitting on that table. No, but only for a moment. Uh, and then he gave up again doing uh, something stupid like this. Now, generative art is, of course, an oxymoron. Because if there is art, it is generative. Because art is not in the world, it comes into the world. Quite different uh, from the natural. This, of course, art shares with engineering and with all sciences, clearly. We make the world. The artists do it in a nice way, such that we like it. The engineers have also done it in a nice way. But now, 
we are witnesses of engineering work leading to the destruction of the world. Nothing more to say. <clears throat> okay. Okay, I have also hinted at this already, the first two lines. We are thinking the image, the machine is there to make it. And indeed, in the mid-60s, uh, starting in 1963, uh, first people, um, Michael Knoll uh, is on the program, but not pr here personally, and Georg Nees, um, who was the author of the first images, the first exhibition worldwide of computers, of, of images ever generated by a, a computer in 1965 at Benzes uh, Institute. <clears throat> the machine is there to make it, and therefore we can now be proud of thinking images. Crazy. No? How can you, I'm, I'm sitting here and thinking an image. Can I do this? Uh, no. Uh, between the two is the program, doesn't matter. Um, in one word, what has happened and is still happening, is continuing, without people noticing, was a great revolution. A cultural revolution, by the way, at the time when you had the cultural revolution in China. In the West, you had the algorithmic revolution. A little later, that is true, uh, and you had the great political uh, revolution over there in <clears throat> China. Machinizing, that's my word, it's not mechanizing. Because mechanization is putting something into mechanical form. When you put something on the computer, whatever it is that you want to do using a computer, you machinize. And that's much more and very different from mechanization. When I was giving talks in the 1960s and I used that term machinizing, journalists always wrote mechanizing. <laughs> this is how I got to learn journalists. They are nice, nice people, nice people but not very intelligent. <laughs> they are at least as intelligent as me. Yes, that is true. <laughs> because they thought, if that guy is using the term machinization uh, and machinizing, machinisierung in German, fantastic word, <clears throat> then he does not know what he's talking about, the journalists probably thought. And therefore they turned that into machini mechanisierung. No? They didn't realize that time had changed. And in that very word, that single word of machinizing mental labor, this is in three words, one notion, what computers are doing, what computers need to be doing something, anything. We machinize our work. The 19th century was the climax of machinizing onto the mechanical machine. The 20th century is the, the time uh, when mental and not manual labor gets put onto the machine. <clears throat> and when you do this, when you think the image, you never, never think one image you always already think an infinity of images. Because whenever you write a program, software, for a computer, you think infinities of possible potential processes. So the art has really entered a totally new way of thinking, thinking in infinities to perhaps be generated, perhaps to be realized. Okay, you have read this. I show a few images. This is the first drawing machine. Is that possible? 
in Germany. No, it's not possible. And the Americans would, of course, immediately protest. Yeah, we have plotters. I would say, yes, yes, dear friend from the US. <laughs> you have a plotter. But we in Germany have a machine to draw. And that's something totally different. Because the plotter could never produce the aesthetic quality, the visual quality that we could produce on this machine, uh, the area where the, you see how it draws. <laughs> um, this is 1.5 meters uh, squared. Who was the inventor? Some of you may know him, his name, Konrad Zuse, the inventor of the computer the first computer in the world. Now, in 1963, he came up with this drawing machine that was his last invention, Konrad uh, Zuse. And I was lucky enough that where I was working at the Computing Center of the University of Stuttgart, uh, the uh, professor approaches me uh, in the morning, Hanake, uh, he, he was from uh, Vienna, Hanake, wir kaufen eine Zeichenmaschine. We are going to buy a drawing machine. Aha. Um, aber wir haben keine Software, but we don't get any software. Mm -hmm. Machen Sie es. Would you do it? Yes. <laughs> the most important event, with the exception of being born, in my life. <laughs> because that professor trusted that I, a student in his fourth semester of studying mathematics, can do, can develop that software that they don't get from the company of Zuse. Fantastic. No, because now I had to start thinking as an early guy in the world, uh, now how do you draw when the machine cannot draw? It can only calculate. Uh, okay, um, so, uh, okay, and these are two uh, early examples. You would agree that there are certain similarities in the two images, but you would also agree uh, that they are different. I hope you would. The same program. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did maybe five more of these uh, until I bought a, a, a program this. Again, do they look, yes, somehow similar. We are always doing classes of images and not individual images. By the way, uh, the left one you see, perhaps, m maybe not in the back, there is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of reddish stuff there. Maybe you see it. You can hardly see it anymore because I had put it up on a wall in my room where the sun was shining in, and therefore the sun uh, killed the red. That's analog. <laughs> okay, yeah, nice. Uh, left is not done by computer. Uh, in 1965, that would have been way too difficult. It is Paul Klee, and many of you will probably know this image, it's one of his famous ones, uh, Hauptweg, in German is the title, Hauptweg und Nebenwege, Main Roads and Side Roads. Mm. Um, I took this as an inspiration, I claim, uh, for the uh, right one. Nothing much similar, in particular, no circles in Paul Klee. Why did I add the circles? Because they change the aesthetics tremendously, I believe. And do you see that you see circles in the left part? Do you also discover a circle in the right part? Up there, you do. Ah, fantastic. The random decisions of this program happen to decide Many in the left, not so many, a few, but only one in the right. Fantastic aesthetics. Had there been none in the right part, horrible, throw it away. 
right? But with the one, this balances out, not in a waiting sense of balancing, but it balances out that there are circles also as an addition in this uh, funny, I don't know, uh, you may like it or not. Um, this, by the way, I should tell you this anecdote. <clears throat> I saw also, th this used three hours to draw. Three hours. That's a long time. If I work nine days, nine hours per day, I can do just three. But people wanted to have this. And I sold it by the time, would you believe this, for 80 Deutschmark. It would now, uh, Wolf Lieser is amongst us, uh, maybe 2,000 euro, roughly around this, could be, per perhaps, not, not important. Um, but the fact that people wanted to buy this for 80 mark caused me to then say, okay, I produce an edition of 40 silk screens. No? So there are silk screens in the world of this, cheaper, and original drawings. Uh, I didn't want to sit there uh, and wait for uh, three hours. Uh, and this is the end of my talk. Have I stayed within time? That's for the first time in my life. <laughs>